Welcome, everybody. It's Saturday Night Alive for the Global Peace Tribe, and that's you, and you, and you, and you, and all of you who are watching and hearing my voice right now. I want to welcome those of you who are watching on Facebook, and I want to invite you, if you're watching us live, come on into our Zoom room. We have a wonderful group of presenters and performers tonight, and if you're in the Zoom room, you can chat with them. It's much easier to chat directly. You might want to even ask questions from some of our doctors and presenters, uh, because it's all about honoring our body temple. And you know, most of the people that watch our show tend to be caregivers, people in the service industry, taking care of everybody else. Well, tonight it's remembering to take care of ourself. You know, a great spiritual teacher said, when you honor yourself fully, you honor the entire universe. You know, in some of our more spiritually oriented shows, we've heard, you know, wise teachers talk about how we are one with all things. And so really, truly learning to honor the earth, that's what we worked on last week with our climate change show, and also honoring our body temples. And tonight we're going to learn uh, wonderful ways, some new ways, learning all about uh, new advances in our understanding of the brain and of the body. Uh, We're going to hear from a a world-class healer. And we've got some of our favorite entertainers and uh, musical artists. So it's going to be a great show. So come on into our Zoom room. How do you do that? It's easy. Go to globalpeacetribe.com. That's globalpeacetribe.com and register. It takes about 60 seconds. And yes, we then have your email. And we send you an email every week that lets you know about the upcoming shows. You'll also get an email that will give you the replay information of how to watch tonight's show and the 81 previous shows that we've done. Yep, this is our 82nd show. We started when the pandemic happened, and Deborah and I thought it would last maybe a month or two. Here we are. And, and we're glad because we are building this beautiful community that we call the Global Peace Tribe. So thank you. Glad you're with us. It's going to be a fabulous show. Finally, I want to welcome anybody watching the replay. Our statistics show us now that about 30, 35% of the people who watch this are watching us, um, the YouTube replay or um, one of the Facebook replays. So you're all welcome as well. So welcome, everybody. And to tell you all about the show, here is my producing partner, my co-host, Deborah Juicy. Thank you, Scott, and welcome everyone to what is now our 82nd show that we produced every Saturday night since the lockdown. And we're in season seven, A Glimpse of Heaven, where we're giving you 13 new shows. And I wanna thank you again for your donations when you register or donating to our donation platform. Your donations is what keeps this Saturday night alive, alive. And so we really appreciate it so much. So please keep those donations, keep coming in. And yes, again, this is gonna be a great show. Our theme is honoring our body temple. And if you've been following our shows, you know that we stand for uniting the world and creating a world that works for everyone. And we constantly support organizations, presenters, and individuals that do that. But we know that the first thing that needs to happen if we're going to help others is to take care of ourselves. Taking care of our bodies is one of the most important, but sometimes something we don't take care of or we neglect in some ways. Sometimes it's easier to take care of others than pay attention to ourselves. But the analogy of putting on your oxygen mask first is really true. And as we age, it's more important than ever to pay attention to our health, especially with maximum brain and body health. So that's what the show is gonna be about tonight. We're gonna approach from a scientific end and also from a spiritual side. We're gonna find out the latest science and neurochemistry as well as the spiritual reality of quantum healing. And we're also gonna see how we can heal through the combination of body knowledge and healthy principles. And as always, we're gonna have fabulous music which raises the energy and has us all connect on the heart which is one of the most healthy things that you can do. So I'm gonna share with you now our incredible group of presenters. 
So tonight we are gonna have Deepak Chopra, who most everyone knows. He's a renowned pioneer of integrative medicine and personal transformation. He's the founder of Chopra Foundation, which is an organization that researches on health and well-being, and he'll be with us with video tonight. And we're also pleased to have Dr. Heather Sanderson. She is the founder of the North County Natural Medicine and specializes in neurocognitive medicine and neurohacking. Welcome, Heather. And we're gonna have James Machenberger, who is a co-founder of and CEO of Neurohacker Collective with a mission to advance the human quality of life. Welcome, James. And we're also happy to have Troy Stallman, who is a neuromechanical specialist and a fitness expert and has his personal practice, All Systems Go. And right next to her, him is Kristen Hoffman, one of our favorite musicians that we have, a Juilliard trained singer songwriter with an extraordinary artistic range. She sings from the heart and soul and she's gonna bless us tonight with her beautiful music. And partnering with Kristen is Cornflower, who is one of our other totally favorite musicians. He's a genre bending vocalist, live looper and beatboxer. Um, incredible music from the soul as well. The two of them are an amazing team to be both on the show together tonight. It's gonna be great. Welcome Cornflower. And partnering to offer you some um, creativity is Casey Chai. She is a theater director and trainer, but she's an incredible dancer and she's gonna offer a dance tonight at the beginning of the show. She has a company at school called Belly Queen that focuses on healing and social change through dance and music. Welcome, Keishi. And we're so happy to have back Sean Jay, one of our favorite magicians. He's been seen on Fox, ABC, NBC, Masters of Illusion, and always comes up with unique and amazing tricks to delight and inspire us. Welcome back, Sean. And as you know, we have a green love campaign. We've had that since the very beginning of the show. We use the power of community to bring forth the abundance and then send it out to either an organization or a person in need. And tonight we have a very special situation. We are gonna be rescuing someone from Afghanistan who does incredible work of peace in the world. And we're gonna share with you about that later. So think about what that can be by your green love coming in and actually bringing someone home from Afghanistan with your green love. So we are going to start tonight with incredible music and a dance performance with Keishi. And we always like to start with a big wow, just to center us in the hearts, to raise our energy and our frequency and really connect us all. And that's what's going to happen tonight with Kristen Hoffman, who is going to start with a musical uh, source channeling that she does and partnering with Keishi Chai who is going to give us a beautiful dance. They are gonna to work together and really bless this opening of the show right now. Thank you, both of you. Well, such an honor to be here tonight. And I can't imagine a better subject than honoring our body temple to celebrate with music and dance. And it's always just one of my most favorite experiences in the world to collaborate with Keishi. And this is going to be an improvisation. So I will be diving into a solom improvisation musically, which I think of as soul light weaving with ohm, the vibration of the universe. And Keishi is also going to be improvising to the music and we're just going to be listening to each other and tuning into our bodies and to each other and to this beautiful planet and see what wants to come forward. And I like to invite everyone who's watching, this is a co-creative process, so send your intentions into the music, into the dance. We will be literally interpreting and feeling and sensing your, your visions as well. So here we go. Let's see what happens.
There's all these comments coming into the chat box, of course, goosebumps. Um, and I like what Shauna just wrote. What a beautiful angelic entry into tonight. Uh, Wendy writes, Wanda writes, angelic from two angels. And yes, absolutely. Oh my God. I'm totally getting chills and chicken skin. Thank you. I wanna, we're gonna have more. Um, Keishi is going to uh, come back in a little while and lead us in a, a movement experience. And um, to learn more about Keishi, uh, go to her website. And it's her name, Keishi, spelled K-A-E-S-H-I dot com. And she's doing all sorts of interesting activities, projects. We're going to share a little bit more with you about that um, when she comes back. Um, but definitely, Keishi, you... You're a, a wonderful new part of our repertoire. You know, I've seen people that we bring back on a regular basis and, oh my gosh, every time you dance, it just lifts us up in such wonderful ways. Thank you. Thank you. And for those of you, and I know that almost everybody on our show is a Kristen Hoffman fan, and I want to make sure everybody knows about what's happening tomorrow. Um, Kristen and Cornflower, who's going to be on the show tonight also, are doing another sonic source activation, opening the doors of perception. They did uh, an event together for a few months ago and people were blown away. Uh, and it was one of the most powerful two hour experiences I've ever had in my life. And so it was like, can we do it again? So we are. Tomorrow afternoon, one o'clock Pacific, four o'clock Eastern, uh, Kristen and Cornflower are gonna be coming back together again to combine their amazing talents and to take us on an incredible journey. There is still uh, some tickets available. It is uh, a limited number of people because it's a very intimate experience. So you can still register at sonicsourceactivation.com, sonicsourceactivation.com. So um, we're really excited about that. And Casey, I will look forward to seeing you very, very shortly in a little while. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Casey. That was so beautiful to share like that. She's amazing. She really is just so beautiful. And you two really work together in a really lovely way. Oh, we've been collaborating for years and Casey is just such a dear soul sister and I have so much respect for her art and and the, the way that she uses dance as a vehicle for awakening and connection. I've, I've just witnessed so many incredible women and men have a total awakening in her presence and through her, yeah. her um, incredible vehicle that she sets up. <sighs> well, <sighs> I'm keeping Kristen on because we are going to go into a different direction now. Um, as you know, we raise money. Every week we are raising money for somebody or something. And um, Kristen came to us a couple of weeks ago and asked if we could provide support for something very important. And uh, to tell you a little bit more about it, here's Kristen. Mm. 
Thanks so much, Scott. And I just want to say thank you so much to Saturday Night Alive for just feeling called to this, um, to this cause. So uh, some of you might have seen an episode a few weeks ago when I had David Gershon on when I was co-hosting with Scott and Deborah, And I met this young man um, named Ali Sina in the, over the last few years when we were both team leaders uh, partaking in David Gershon's Peace on Earth by 2030 game. And this game has started to be played all around the world as a vehicle for peace and awareness. And we were taking part in the alpha pilot of this game. And Ali Sina, um, who is from Kabul, Afghanistan, is this incredible young man who has encouraged all of his classmates through the years to get more and more involved in peace movements. And he actually found out and met David and was able to coordinate s uh, countless, like 60 to 80 team leaders and just was always um, the epitome of a young leader for peace. He was a joy to get to know and I have maintained a friendship with him and we believed that he was actually able to get out of Kabul because he had a scholarship to university and whatnot and unfortunately at the very last moment um, he needed to fly back to um, Kabul to get some very important documents and for his travels and university and it the timing was just horrible and everything unfolded in Afghanistan within those few weeks um, and he has been stuck there now as you know as as I think everyone watching knows the situation in Kabul and in Afghanistan right now is extremely challenging especially for those who have been very vocal about peace and about who are leaders and Ali Sina and his sister are very much trying their their best to get to safety and we will be raising funds through Saturday Night Alive this week and next week to try to help make this happen so that they can get plane tickets and get out. A lot of the other um, people that we worked with in the in the peace game have actually made it out to other countries and Ali Sina is in a very difficult situation at this time. So please open your hearts if you can donate anything. Um, we will absolutely make sure that your funds get to Ali Sina and if possible also help support his sister. Um, we really feel that the next few weeks are imperative to get them to safety and we are just doing everything we can and, and trying to use resources from here that can really help make this a possibility. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Scott, let's, let's show our little video. We have actually a video of Ali Sina. It's just a minute and a half from when he was leading um, and working on the Peace on Earth game. And you can just see a little bit of his energy. And I'm Ali Sina Sharifi a peace activist from Afghanistan. I'm one of the first team and zone leaders of Peace on Earth by 2030 game in my country. My highest dream for the world is peace. Since my childhood, I've witnessed explosions, war, violence, and hatred. Taliban and ISIS are acronyms for brutality in my country. However, they're not limited to where I live. They have their lives throughout the world. The Peace on Earth by 2030 game has sparked hope in me and my friends. The seven actions have allowed us to begin changing the culture of war and violence into a culture of peace and compassion in Afghanistan. We do this through every individual we befriend and each action we take each day. We are now 80 youth leaders strong from high schools and universities. We come to our team meetings with hope, aspiration, and new ideas to reinvent our country. We have learned team building, leadership, and cooperation. We have lost the fear of loneliness as we work for peace on earth in our country and the world. This game is a revolution that is leading the world toward a bright and promising future, full of beauty, full of happiness and full of love. The time for peace is not going to come tomorrow. It is today. I've lit the torch and pass it to you. 
Wow, what a beautiful, beautiful young man. You know, um, Christian has shared, uh, you muted Christian. Uh, Christian has shared with me some of the emails that he's sent and it's really devastating what he's writing about people that he knows that have been confiscated, taken away. I mean, it's serious. So um, I'm pulling up uh, a Q code. We're using the Global Peace Tribe uh, GoFundMe to um, uh, raise money. So again, everybody, please, it's so easy. Um, you can use the link that deborah has been putting into the chat box or just get out your cell phone, go to the camera function and head right to that Q code and you'll see up at the top of your camera, it'll say open GoFundMe in Safari. And there it is, just open. Um, it says 31,000, that's not for Ali Sina. That's the money that we've raised through our GoFundMe for different projects over the year and a half that we've been doing this. Um, uh, and of course, we raised a lot more. We only use our GoFundMe on certain occasions. We prefer to use other people's GoFundMe. Uh, of course, in this case, he doesn't have one. So we're getting it started for him. And really, we need to raise thousands of dollars. Uh, so please, even whatever you can donate, $5, $50, $500, whatever you can donate, please do so. And throughout the show tonight, I will be reading the names of those people who want to know their names. Of course, if you want to donate anonymously, you're welcome to. But I always enjoy celebrating uh, our members of the Global Peace Tribe that donate. I'm not going to say how much you've donated. I'm just going to give your name. And I know that it means a lot to people. We raised money for Mariella. And she said, Scott, oh my God, even people that donated $5, it meant so much to me. They would take the time to do that. So this is a time for us to really offer hope. And um, of course, please put Alicina and what he represents all the people that might be trapped in a country into your prayers, but let's also give them our green support, our green dollar support as well. Kristen. Thank you so much. And I just also from Alicina's emails, I just wanna say that he, even though he's gone through so much challenge over the last few weeks and, last couple of months, um, he's still just so determined to carry the torch of peace through this world. So I know for a fact that y supporting this young man and if we can support his sister as well through these efforts, um, they will be bringing so much love and such a high frequency of peace um, into this world. So please, Thank you for, for opening your hearts and, and giving generously. We are so grateful. And, you know, one last thing, if you could just share a little bit about, about the situation with his sister as well, because uh, we didn't really mention that. Yes, and we're being a little bit sensitive also, which is another reason why we, we didn't want to start a separate GoFundMe. We're being a little sensitive just about names, um, and that's another reason why Alicina couldn't make a video to send to us for tonight. Um, we have to just be sensitive about what is front facing and searchable online and whatnot. But Alicina's sister is also um, an incredible peace activist and very vocal. And so they're just, they have to keep a very low profile at the, um, at the current time. But um, he's just hoping so, so dearly that the both of them and that he can bring his sister with him. And he's working really hard on his end to try to make that possible. But I'm, hold I'm holding, I'm holding the vision for him being on our show soon when we're able to say, Hey, oh. remember Ali Sina, who we raised money for, he got out, his sister got out and I'm holding the vision right now that they're going to be on this show with you. And we're all going to be crying tears of joy that we help them get out of this life-threatening situation. Yes. Oh, I see it. I see it. And David Gershon is going to be on tomorrow. And David Gershon was the one who really made it possible for, for me to get to know a whole group of kids and their teacher working together for peace in Afghanistan. And I'm so grateful that I was able to have this, ex this cross-cultural experience that was so dear to my heart. So David will continue talking, I'm sure, tomorrow morning. You know, actually, this will be a good chance because I know you need to transition. Kristen <laughs> Hoffman is going to magically, Sean Jay is turning her into Troy Stallman. It's it's like a magic trick. Um, so while, while we do that magic trick, um, I will just take a moment to invite all of you. Please join us tomorrow. 
Uh, David Gershon, as she just mentioned, is the executive director of um, this wonderful organization that we just saw uh, Ali Sina talking about. And David's going to be my guest on the Sacred Sunday show tomorrow morning. So please join us tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock Pacific time. Uh, meet David, uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about what he's doing to create peace on this planet by 2030. Um, so thank you. And in a moment, um, Christo, Kristen is turning into Troy. Um, and there he is. <laughs> Welcome, Troy. Uh, and let me share a little bit about who this gentleman is. Uh, not only is he Kristen's beloved, which I'm sure is probably a wonderful part of his life, um, but Troy is with us as a healer. He's a neuromechanical specialist and a fitness expert. He works in New York City in the Hudson Valley at his own personal practice, which is called All Systems Go. Troy has been a pioneer in his field for over 25 years. He started as a fitness industry specialist and a consultant to top fitness magazines in his groundbreaking, highly effective body restoration technique called Protoform, attracted clients from all over the world, helping to resolve thousands of body issues. Take a breath, thousands of body issues. What we're gonna learn a little bit about tonight is about the connection of how we can deal with our body issues. As he says, body problems cannot be solved using compartmentalism, the same habits or thinking that created them. Continuing with a quote from Troy, you must solve problems by using a mix of logical reasoning, intuition, and creativity. This balanced mental approach helps him to work in a progressive fashion, staying objective, but also allowing him to expand the perspective, connecting the dots to determine the root cause. So Troy, thank you <clears throat> so much for agreeing to be on our show. It's a pleasure, um, Scott. Thank you very much. Yeah. And, you know, I'd love to start just by asking you, share with us a success story. Share with us maybe an example of someone who came to you, a situation that they were in, and how you helped them perhaps connect the dots and have a change in their life. Hmm. Well, there's so many to uh, borrow from, but one stands out right now. There was a woman uh, probably eight years ago uh, that uh, she heard about me through her doctor's um, whatnots and she came to me uh, very busted up she used to be a professional rock climber and dancer mm -hmm. and she danced for a particular dance troupe that i don't remember now but um she took a, a a big fall she fell about 35 feet onto concrete she broke her jaw side of her skull her rib cage was caved in uh, her organs were damaged her hips her hips were you know broken up pubic synthesis was totally out of alignment, among other things. She broke a femur, she broke her foot. Um, that's the shape I got her in about one year out. She had uh, already been through a lot of traditional rehab techniques and her family sought out, you know, high and low, it, it, everyone they could get to her to see what they could do. She hit a, a major plateau at one point and, uh, you know, she lost a lot of hope. But, you know, almost the first time we, you know, met in person uh, I would say that there was some kind of connection in the sense that she she trusted me and that felt great and I told her that you know I, I actually think the other approaches that you tried were not the right approach and basically I, I explained to her that you have to reconnect everything in your body that you lost on an energetic level and that I would be muscle testing her in very specific ways and these are muscle tests that are backed by biomechanical studies. They're not traditional applied kinesiology, which is more like ballpark figure kind of muscle testing, that, that I would figure out truly why she can't move uh, correctly. And basically in a, in a sh few short weeks, we had her up out of the wheelchair, moving around the, the gym. Um, her enthusiasm for what we were doing was just unbelievable and the love she full of hugs and full of uh, positive energy. And in about, I'd say three months time, she was actually able to start rock climbing, um, at, you know, a very low <laughs> intensity level, but that's how fast things can move at all systems go. 
And uh, that that's always touched me, that story. And I'll f never forget it. Wow, that's beautiful. You know, both you and what we, our other doctor today, we're learning all these new ways that we can really transform uh, areas of our life where we think we're stuck. And when I, when I interviewed and talked to Troy earlier, that's what impressed me so much is that almost all of us have had conditions where we thought, okay, this is it. I'm going to have to live with this for the rest of my life. And Troy and our other doctor, Dr. Heather, is helping to actually break that model. Um, so Troy, a big part of what you do is something I had never heard of before called neuromechanic. So tell us about that. What is, what is it that a neuromechanic actually does? Well, I, I sort of coined that term just so that my clients could better understand what I do. Uh, because, you know, calling myself uh, by a, a great many other names uh, wasn't, you know, doing it. So neuromechanic is, uh, it just basically means that I'm going to evaluate and assess all of the mechanics of the body and the neuromuscular system that, you know, drives uh, the bones into different uh, types of motion pattern. So basically we start by laying someone down on a table and doing all, all you know, very comprehensive uh, neuromuscular assessment. And then after that, um, I can basically tell in a few minutes where they're out of alignment in their joints. And then I sort of back, you know, engineer everything. And uh, in about 10 or 15 minutes, I already start working on the client. And we, we take them through a bunch of different isometrics. Um, the isometrics are activating. They will activate muscles. They'll basically take a muscle from a state where they've lost a, a, a lot of muscle control and slowly ramp up um, the motor neuron that drives the muscle. Uh, the whole process is uh, very comprehensive in the sense that I look from head to toe. I look for anything in the spine that's causing uh, muscles to shut down in a circuit-like fashion. And so basically, if you see a lot of muscles shut down, you don't necessarily work on individual muscles. You basically, if you know what you're doing, you you look for um, the, the, the root cause, I call it the epicenter, because there's a lot of uh, root causes that I find, but if you find the epicenter, that's a place where if you resolve that, say C1, you know, cervical spine, and you realign that vertebra, you may have a whole circuit or two circuits may switch on, and that's proven, you know, when you go back through the muscle testing, everything is indeed switched on. The other thing too is when you stand the client up, and I do that about every 15 minutes in my treatments, um, they look completely different. They start to move differently. They talk differently. They, their mood switches to a much more positive, favorable kind of mood. They, um, uh, they give me a lot of feedback in terms of sensory and you know what they're feeling, uh, which is very helpful. And they really get into the process because um, we do it together. Uh, I feel like that we, we co-create the whole experience together. I'm, I may be the guide, but what's interesting about this kind of work is their participation is resetting their muscles and it's realigning their joints. And the thing about what I do that's also very interesting, I think that separates me from other modalities is that there's a permanence to it. Um, a lot of modalities, they realign, but there's no glue, so to speak. Um, you know, someone walks out and they feel fragile within the new alignment and they're out of alignment in no time. And that is because um, when the body's out of um, balance for a long time, the motor engram changes, and that's what drives the movement patterns. That uh, there are hundreds and millions, if not billions, of movement patterns. And if you have a faulty, you know, uh, motor system that's, or let's say, a pattern that's not as efficient as what they once had, that creates all kinds of stresses and wear and tear problems in the body. Um, so again, once you resolve the underlying postural issue, um, basically all of their motor mechanics, the efficiency returns to basically all their movement patterns, and then their body stops putting stress, um, you're creating stress um, in very, very predictable fashion. And then once the body's efficient again and moving well, they basically can start to strength train and receive other types of therapy um, quite well, and they get, you know, Un unbelievable results at that point. And so I feel like this is a foundational level treatment system. Um, I, th I feel like uh, it's filling in the void uh, of what modalities are out there in the world. Um, I, I have many goals 
with this modality. Well, thank you. And, you know, I, I know that a lot of people have had extraordinary experiences with you. What do you think is the disconnect in most current systems of body therapy and analysis? What's, where are they missing the point and what are you doing that's different? It's a great question. Um, I think the main thing is that uh, it's people of various modalities, they put a lot of energy and time, money into their education and they you know they end up putting a lot of experience into that as well and so when other new things new information comes along they're 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 very resistant to changing their ways um because they don't want to be discredited discredited or uh, uh they they you know also they don't want to be called out in front of their peers and whatnot so there's just great resistance across the board so that mindset that state of consciousness um uh, is the main preventer of you know evolution within a lot of modalities so they get stuck you know kind of stuck or stifled in their own um, thinking um, they may they may think that what they're doing is the best and you know then they stop there i also think that they don't realize that what they're treating especially when you, when you talk about neuromuscular skeletal mechanics they they don't realize what they're treating is the symptom which would be say excess muscle tension and if you keep you know, applying a stretch to that over and over, or a deep tissue massage or foam rolling and whatnot. Uh, basically what happens is the, you, you may have short-term success where there is a release of tension, but it always comes back with a vengeance, I always say. Mm -hmm. So you have to look at it from a more zoomed out perspective. Um, so they, they'll keep doing that. And you know, the, the, the client, the patient keeps receiving and they c it's almost like a dog chasing his tail around, you know, they're <laughs> not making too much progress at a certain point. Um, it might be helpful to an extent, but the underlying issue is what what is causing that um, excess tension? And I would tell you that that's compensatory. Yeah. Um, anytime you have tension, areas that are really tight, that, that we're not always, you know, tight, that's the body's solution, actually. Uh, it's this trying to solve a control problem called movement. And... So what it does is it basically your mind, uh, your brain finds a path of least resistance. It's, it's always in a quest for that because it's trying to conserve energy. And so it, essentially your, your brain, your, your, your nervous system can invent the next best way to move. And, you know, so what I think practitioners are seeing is just outcomes that they don't fully understand. So their interpretation is not quite there. Maybe their, you know, base or their foundational education has also created too many paradigms. So it's kind of like a blind spot. Um, I, I hope that answers the question. Yeah, and we're already running out of time, but I have two more questions for you that I, I, I definitely want again. So the theme is honoring our body temple. What are some things you can recommend for everybody watching that they can do to honor the body temple more fully? Wow, that's a great question also. Um, there's so many things <laughs> I could recommend, uh, you know, but let's keep it simple. Um, I would say the number one thing a person has to do, uh, echoing some of what I heard in the uh, pre-show is movement is essential. Uh, the, the biggest creators or influencers, uh, to, in terms of like weakening the muscle system is sitting too long, mm -hmm. wrong shoes. And these deserve, you know, I'd have to unpack that for quite a while, each each of these categories. But the shoes are a big concern. The chair they're sitting on is a big concern. The, the pillow, the bed people are sitting or laying, laying on, you know, night after night, eight hours a night. Um, but sitting especially because we live in a modern world now where, you know, almost most types of work these days, you're sitting for long hours. I would advise that people uh, get up every 20 minutes, basically – on your phone, all you got to do is set it up that a little bell goes off every 20 minutes and you stand up. And all you have to do is literally stand up for a couple seconds and then you can sit back down. Wow. And if you did that, it'll change your life. Um, try it. You'll see what I mean. Y at the end of the day, you won't feel as stiff. You won't feel as achy. You won't create as much inflammation because at the end of the day, you'll have a, b a, a better functioning neuromuscular system that operates and you know, is, is working more effectively and efficiently. Uh, so that's number one. Number two, I would say 
movement in general, get out there and take more walks. Um, maybe have a, sh and, uh, and the other thing too, as I tell most clients, stop overdoing things, just, you know, approach fitness with consistency and just do little mini doses. In other words, instead of a half hour walk, maybe take two or three 15 minute walks and you'll create less stress in the body that way, especially if you're suffering from mechanical problems and you'll end up, you know, not breaching your, s your threshold to stress. And basically that adds up. Um, when you do it the right way, you'll, you'll realize your, your fitness and your well being completely changes just by being consistent with what actually works and doesn't stress out the body. Wow. I'm that guy. I'm in this chair all day long. So I uh, thank you. I'm going to start doing that. We have to I, talk. <laughs> we do <laughs> got to talk. I have a lot I, of more ideas than that, but that's a good start. You know, Trey, I'd love to invite you to be on one of my other shows where we can really go on for, you know, a good hour, hour and 15 minutes. That's why I do. I would love that. Next show. So let's, let's schedule that. But oh, in, great. We, Amazing. So we'll schedule that and you'll all hear about it, but also to learn more about Troy, you can go to his website, which is allsystemsgo.info, allsystemsgo.info. Now, Troy, people can get consultations with you over the phone or by Zoom. They don't have to come yes, to New York. Can. Yeah, we can arrange that. You just write to Michael and tell, you know, tell Michael what you're interested in, and he'll, he'll take you from there. Um, we you might want to show him, too, if you scroll down a little bit, um, sure. they can sign up for my... Oh, yeah my new uh, seasonal newsletter, uh, which honestly, Scott, you inspired me to do so. So oh, I, uh, because, you know, I'm, I'm very, very busy, but you know, I shouldn't be so busy that I don't, you know, share with the world more often what I've created, what I'm doing and how, how much we can help people bounce back. Mm. Well, thank you. I mean, you've already given me some tips I'm going to use and okay. um, I'll reach out to you tomorrow and we'll schedule that time for you to be on the next show. Awesome. We can go deeper. Thank you so much, Troy. I appreciate it very much being on the show. Yeah, it's great to have you here. Um, all right, everybody. We're continuing to learn and grow. And to introduce our next segment, here's Deborah. Thank you, Scott. And again, what a great show. We put these together and it's just amazing the people that come on and all the valuable information they have to share. So thank you, everyone. And this is a special segment that we have every single show. And it's Wisdom Jewels. It's Jay Mayer and Jan Kaplan put together very incredible, creative, and inspirational quotes around our theme. And so we're going to share them with you now. And thank you so much, Jan and Jay, for your work in this.
Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Jan, for those wonderful videos. And now I get to introduce our keynote speaker for tonight. And I've really enjoyed getting to know her because she's, as you're about to see, she's got a great personality and she combines her wisdom with tremendous compassion, tremendous care. And for any of us who are concerned about our own personal brain health or who have loved ones that are dealing with or could be dealing with Alzheimer's or dementia, or maybe we're afraid that, God, I don't wanna get Alzheimer's, I don't wanna get dementia. This might be one of the most important people you ever meet on Saturday Night Alive. And of course, I'm talking about Dr. Heather Sandy, Sandstein, I call her Dr. Heather. Um, and she is dedicated to changing that paradigm, uh, changing the paradigm of once we start aging and once we're at a certain point, it's just all downhill. She's changing that paradigm and she's doing an amazing job with it. So um, I'm really proud to have her. I'm just gonna say a little bit about her. She's the founder and medical director of the Soul Sare Medical Clinic and also the creator of Marama, the very first residential care facility for elderly of its kind. And uh, you'll learn a little bit more about that. But here's the point that's so powerful. Her passion is telling everyone that Alzheimer's is optional. Think about that. It's optional. We don't have to have that happen to us or to the people we love. She was the recipient of a grant to study 25 participants who are following her clinical approach to dementia, and the results are going to be published next year. She can't uh, tell the results because of you know, all the way the legal things work, but the bottom line is it's working. She's onto something really powerful. So Dr. Heather, thank you so much for being with us and tell us a little bit about what's happening. Uh, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. And I've uh, taken a tip from Troy and I'm now standing instead of sitting. Thanks for that. Um, I started seeing dementia patients in 2017 after being trained by Dr. Dale Bredesen. And what I saw was miraculous. I had went into Dr. Bredesen's training a bit skeptical. You know, we're told over and over again that there's nothing we can do about dementia. Once you have it, you know, many neurologists will say, here's some Namenda or some Aricept. It doesn't work that well. Go ahead and get your affairs in order and I'll see you in six or 12 months. There's really nothing else that we can do. And this is really just factually inaccurate. It's actually overwhelming how much that we can do. Now, I had my first patient after a uh, training with Dr. Bredesen, her name was Linda, and she came in and by the time I asked her a question, she couldn't remember it long enough to give me an answer. She had yes or no responses and you could see, even though her husband obviously loved her so much, she was desperate to find some help for her. Their relationship was starting to deteriorate because they just couldn't communicate. Her handwriting had been affected and on a MOCA score, the Montreal Cognitive Assessment, this is a 30 point scale, 30 is perfect, above 26 is normal. She had a two, she was almost nonverbal. Well, they took the bull by the horns. They did everything that I suggested. They moved out of a moldy bedroom. She got her amalgams removed in her mouth and saw the dentist got everything done. She started on hormone replacement. They completely shifted their diet. They started ballroom dancing and exercising every day. And she came back just seven weeks later and her mocha had gone up to a seven. So now she was speaking in complete sentences. Her and her husband were bickering about something that had happened the night before. So when I saw what was possible for Linda, I thought, you know, there's so many people in the world that are suffering unnecessarily that don't have to get dementia. And now when I say that Alzheimer's is optional, there are many, many people suffering right now and I don't in any way mean to blame them, right? This is more to suggest that if you don't have it, there are things that we can do to prevent it. We feel very confident in that these days. Five, 10 years ago, even a few years ago, three years ago, we didn't know how powerful a ketogenic diet could be. We didn't have the results from Dr. Bredesen's studies. So now that we have more information, uh, I am teaming up with Dr. Bredesen. I um, am working with him, with the community of doctors who are involved in this research 
to let everyone know that there is a lot that you can do. And the results, the statistics so far are actually very, very, very encouraging. What we do know is that anyone who does this sooner rather than later at those that early onset where you start having those senior moments, that's not normal. That's actually an early sign of disease. And well, it's an early sign of symptomatic disease. Alzheimer's is a decades in the making process that happens in our brain. What we do at Solcere, the clinic uh, that I founded in North County, San Diego, um, we, we shine light on the brain. That's kind of the idea behind the, the word Solcere is solutions for the cerebrum or solutions for the brain or also soul in, in Spanish is sun. So shining light on the brain so that we can understand more. We're very dedicated to the research here. Uh, and the reason that I am gonna share my screen here real quick. The reason that I was so excited to do research is because my patients were asking, if I do this, if I take the time and spend the money to, excuse me, I'm gonna find this slide here real quick. Um, <laughs> apologize, I created a slideshow here for you all. Thank you. So when, yeah. when um, here, one moment, sorry, I think I have to share my screen first and then you get to see the slides. Actually, if you pull up the, um, pull up on, there you go. Perfect. There we go. Okay. Thank you for your patience. So uh, this is Dr. Bredesen's research and I also am very excited to um, be collecting data right now because I had patients coming to me saying, if I spend the money, if I make the effort to do all of this. It's hard work, changing your diet, increasing exercise, prioritizing sleep. These things all take time and effort and resources. And so we need to be able to confidently tell our patients, yes, you're a good fit and we expect reversal of disease or no, maybe this isn't the time to do that. And it's better to put those resources into prevention for the next generation. So what we know from the, the papers that Dr. Bredesen has published, the one on the left is the clinical trial results. So these were participants, there were 25 of them, and they were supported by very well-trained doctors and health coaches. And what they saw was 84% of them improved. They improved their cognitive function. And another 4% stopped the decline. Now, this is absolutely miraculous. This is incredible. When most people talk about uh, what to expect with a treatment of, Alzheim of Alzheimer's, like something like aducanumab or aduhelm, the uh, recent drug that was very controversially uh, uh, approved by the FDA, what they showed was just a decline in the rate of progression. So people were still getting worse. They were just getting worse a little bit less quickly. And what Dr. Bredesen is showing is that we're actually turning the ship completely around and getting improvement. Now this other paper on the right, this is the RECODE protocol, excuse me. The RECODE protocol is when people do not have as much support as they had on the left. So the, the Clinical trial patients, they came in, their costs were covered, they had lots of handholding, they had the support of a doctor, a well-trained doctor, and a health coach. And on the right, they were more self-motivated. They were reading the book, they were getting the online support, but they weren't necessarily working really closely with a doctor and a health coach. So what we see here is, as you, we might expect, a little bit less uh, recovery in terms of the percentage of people, of participants. However, still 51% of them increased their cognitive function. So not just stopped declining, but got better. And another 23%, they actually stopped declining. So this is, this is miraculous in and of itself. You can imagine for people like my, my patient, our relationships uh, are so affected by cognitive decline, right? We, it's almost like losing a loved one twice, first when they lose their mind, and then again later on when they pass away. And that grief process is so challenging uh, because it, it's, it's just absolute suffering, torturous for many of us. And I'm sure as many of you know who are caregivers potentially for someone 
with dementia, it's very, very stressful. We actually find that caregivers have a two and a half times the risk of uh, the average in the population of getting dementia. And that's because of the risks associated. A caregiver is usually not exercising regularly. They're maybe not eating great. And it's also very, very stressful, all things that contribute to cognitive decline. And so we wanna support the caregivers. Thank you for all of the, this, really, I dedicate my work to caregivers. You do the heavy lifting of taking care of the vulnerable in our population. And I'm so, so grateful to you. And you cannot serve from an empty vessel. So please take care of yourselves. The other question that I got as a clinician who was building a reputation in this space was where can I send my loved ones? So Scott, thank you for commenting and, and mentioning Marama. When I was hearing over and over again, you know, I really want my, my dad or my mom or my spouse to be in a place where they can do the Bredesen protocol, where they get the diet and they have the great environment. They get the social engagement and they're, they're encouraged to exercise and support it in that. They're in a non-toxic environment. They're on the ketogenic diet. Well, I started looking around, where, where could I send my patients? Who would I trust? And sure enough, there wasn't anything out there. So I thought, how hard could it be? Let's create one. So I created Marama, which is in, um, in Vista, California, and we have, are supporting residents there in an immersive experience. Um, you will hear from James Schmottenberger a little bit later, and he has developed, worked with his team. He's a CEO over at Neurohacker. And one of the foundational things we do with our research participants and also many of the residents at Marama is we have them on the, his Qualium Mind product. It's such a great nootropic. Those, those nutrients you can see in the bottom right-hand corner here, we've got green juices for our residents regularly. Um, I've got some more pictures here of them all having a really good time, right? This is what aging should look like. This is what senior living should look like. Big smiles, gardening, holding hands, getting that exercise, getting outside, and making sure you have the nutrients to support this cognitive function is absolutely foundational. So we've got to make sure the nutrients are there, the toxins are coming out, and um, that structurally you're getting enough exercise, you're getting enough sleep. All of these components are so critical. And at Marama, we not only support those, but we also hold the expectation, all of our staff are trained to maintain the expectation that our residents get better. If they're not, we're missing something. And uh, Dr. Bredesen is great about that as well. He's always asking me, hey, Heather, is there anybody who's not getting better? What are we missing? We really maintain that the body has this incredible wisdom and this ability to heal itself when we give it the right environment, the right support. And if it's not happening, we're missing something. There's a clue, there's a piece of the puzzle that we don't know yet. So we've created Marama as a place to help all of our busy moms, busy dads, busy, you know, everyone's got lots going on uh, so that they can get some respite from that caregiving and our, our residents can really turn around this awful, awful disease. Oh, wow. I'm going to stop the participant sharing for a moment. Uh, so tell us a little bit. I know that James has donated um, a lot of qualia uh, to your company. And I just want to you know, say for a moment to people that I use this. Um, uh, I kind of got connected to Dr. Heather because I've known James for many years. We've been personal friends, part of a similar group of friends. And so I started using this product. It's helped me a lot. What is it about qualia? Um, that has been helping your patients. And tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so you know both James and Daniel, they're brothers and they work together uh, to start Neurohacker. And Daniel is a very dear friend and mentor of mine. And he created uh, the original Qualia Mind um, product. And I was very in touch with him during that process. In fact, we had patients try it out. I was one of the early people who tried Qualia myself. I benefit personally from it. And as I was creating the protocol, the study protocol here at Solceri, the clinic, what um, I, I, it was a no brainer, pun intended, to have qualia be part of the protocol as a foundational nutrient in the protocol, because I had seen so many of my patients benefit from it. 
So especially people with ADD, ADHD, it really does help with focus, mental clarity, sharpness. It also surprisingly, it, it's, uh, it's stimulating. It has a little caffeine in the, in the original formula. However, a lot of people report better sleep that night. And we know that sleep is absolutely critical to cognitive function the following day. So the Qualia product is, is a geniusly formulated. I don't even, that's not even hyperbole. It really is truly geniusly formulated. There's nothing else like it on the market. What Daniel did and what the team uh, at Neurohacker continues to do is synthesize information. There are many supplement companies who will take one paper, one scientific trial, and they'll just formulate a simple product what they've done at Neurohacker, they've, they've brought together a really A team at, on the science level that can synthesize and understand many, many components of the whole process of generating neurotransmitters, creating them, the synaptic, what's happening in the synapse where they connect to the neuron, and then what's happening on the degradation side as well, so that there's a maintenance of balance. And this is very unique in the space. Beautiful. Um... Dr. Heather is going to stay on and be part of our after show, um, and she's going to take questions and answers. I'm going to ask and see if James and hopefully Troy could also join us, because I see a lot of questions are coming in from people and uh, a lot of people appreciating what you're offering, Dr. Heather. Um, I do want to direct people to your other website, um, Solsare, and of course, when I looked at this before, and everybody, please register. Go to soulsare.com, S-O-L-C-E-R-E.com, S-O-L-C-E-R-E.com. And when you when you get there, you know, definitely register. There's a place where you can sign in and get on the email list. She's got so many wonderful pieces of information. If you go all the way down, uh, she's got a great blog. And then a neurohacker uh, supports her by doing all these podcasts where you can learn all about the science of the brain, science of leaky gut, science of mind hacking, um, podcasts with Dr. Heather talking to other doctors. So there's a lot of wonderful information here that's really, really valuable. Look, this is for us. This is, um, you know, the demographics of our shows that most people watching are older than 45. We're getting older. And we need support like Dr. Heather is providing. So thank you so much for your dedication. Um, and uh, we'll be hopefully in about one hour, we'll be ready for the after show and having you come on uh, and join us um, with some questions. Thank you so much. I can't wait. Thank you, Scott. All right. And now to introduce a little bit of magic, here's Deborah. Thank you, Heather. Amazing presentation, amazing work. And yeah, at Saturday Night Alive, we love to have fun. And so we keep bringing back one of our favorite magicians, Sean Jay. He's seen on Fox, ABC, NBC, Masters of Illusion. And he's always doing something highly creative and amazing to fascinate us. So thank you, Sean, for coming back again tonight. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for having me back. That's going to be fun. So here we are, I'm back, we're gonna have some fun. I'm Sean Jay and well, you know, I grew up in a very different kind of situation. I actually grew up as a vegetarian and so being a traveling entertainer has its pros and its cons. And one of them is the food. So you never know what type of food you're gonna get when you're traveling. Haven't been doing as much traveling uh, this past year, but that's always been a dilemma for me when I do travel, so I actually grew up as a vegetarian, no joke. And growing up that way teaches you how to pack flat and take those snacks where you need them. So one of the most important things is also for honoring our body temple is staying hydrated. Like bringing some water with you right here. This is a real bottle of water. Cheers to that. Now, what if you're looking for something little sweet? Well, I just got a thing for you. If you want a sweet little snack, check this out. Slowly but 
naturally nature's perfect source of vitamin C. It's a real orange, real citrus, folks, right there. Now maybe you're looking for something green, like salad or something, well check this out. I got all the colors, right here. There they are, let's go with green. Now I'm gonna draw something on this notepad. And I want you guys to take a guess at what it is. You uh, feel free, viewers, type in the chat box, what do you think I'm drawing? that there. It's green. It's a good snack, healthy snack you can pack in your lunchbox. Any guesses? I see uh, a number of people saying celery, asparagus, atira says asparagus. Uh, some people said celery. But if you look closely, if you said celery, you were absolutely right. And I got some real celery. All right, here gonna have a little snack. Wash it down with a little water. Still chewing on the celery. <laughs> but check this out. Folks, I don't care whether you choose celery or sandwiches. Keep it gluten-free for me. And I'll tell you one thing though. It's very important. And you have your fruits and your vegetables to take care of your body. So watch this right here behind me. Check this out. Everybody hold up your hands. And I can't hear you because everybody is muted and that's okay. And if you're watching from wherever in the world you're watching, I want you to drum roll on your knees, please. Please drum roll a little bit louder. I can't quite hear it. Ah, yes, perfect. So it doesn't matter whether you choose celery or sandwiches, all I suggest is that you have at least eight to 10 cups of fruits and vegetables a day. And that's how you stay healthy on the go. <laughs> and I'm Sean Jay, and that's delicious. Sweet treat for all you guys online. Thank you Fantastic. so much. Fantastic. Fantastic, Sean. You just <laughs> the best. Absolutely. And I want to say I had the good fortune to meet Sean and his mother when I was in Asheville, North Carolina about a week ago, 10 days ago. Yes. And yes, indeed, they actually do eat in a very healthy way because we had lunch together. So it's true. Um, hey, I want to let everybody know that uh, you can learn more about Sean Jay by going to his website. And it's a very easy website to remember the name. It's his name, Sean j magic now he spells it s-h-a-u-n sean j magic.com mm -hmm. and there's all sorts of wonderful wonderful things there and if uh, can i mention one thing real quick absolutely you want to if, scroll down somewhere here uh well I, i'll uh, let's see can i share my screen i sent a yes, file and it may have gotten lost in the shuffle i'll just pull it up right now here it is so yeah if anybody i'll just pull this up in a sec if anybody wants to stay up to date uh, about uh, when I'll be on TV next. I'll actually be back on Masters of Illusion season eight. This will be my third season in a row on the CW network starting this uh, holiday season around Christmas time. They have a Christmas special and I'll be doing some special Christmas holiday themed magic and then the season will continue on into 2022. So if you want to stay up to date about the air dates and the show times, you guys can check that out right there. If you take your phone, hold it up, snap the QR code, it'll take you where you can enter your name and email. And you can stay up to date. It's something I put out just about only once a month, not even once a week, just once a month. It's just a consolidated update of where I'm performing, what I'm doing. And then also there uh, are podcast episodes that I release. It's called the Making Magic Podcast with Sean Jay. It's a podcast you can get on all the podcast apps. It's also a YouTube show. I do the video interview and I invite creative guests and it's all about inspiring conversations that get your gears turning. And we talk about the creative process. We talk about prop making. We talk about DIY electronics. My last guest was uh, Odin Makes from YouTube. He's a very popular Popular, has half a million subscribers and he makes cosplay out of foam floor mat fabrication and he brought his take 
to creativity. So if, you, if this interests anybody, feel free to snap the code, jump over there and sign up and I'll vanish that in three, two, one. Cool. And Sean will be back very, very shortly. He'll be back in a little while. Thank you so break. much. Sean, God bless you. That You're fantastic. So <laughs> I much try to do what I can, man. So much fun. <laughs> We are one love. Thank you very much, Jay, for that video. And uh, Deborah, you know, I'd love to start by reading the names because a lot of people have donated and mm -hmm. just, I'm so touched by that. So while I do this, if you haven't donated yet, again, we are raising money to save a young man and his sister from mm -hmm. Afghanistan. This might be the most important fundraising this show has ever done. So I'm going to pull up the Q code again um, and invite people while I'm reading the names of who's donated already, please grab your camera on your phone and use the Q code or use the uh, link to the GoFundMe that Deborah has put into the chat box. And so quite a few people have already donated. It's going to take a minute here. The very first person to donate was James Schmachtenberger, who's one of our presenters tonight. So thank you very much, James. I um, also want to thank Lorraine Lenoff, Tim Laser, Amy Gialuco, Amanda Allen, Jay Mayer, God bless you, Jay, thank you so much, Poshat Javidi, Amanda Sebris, Robin Streichler, Phyllis Silverberg, Donna Martin, Lorna Sass, Jamie Sahara Lee, Tomoko uh, Beeb, Barbara Lovejoy, Deborah Perry, Shirley and Price, Ann Douglas, Pamela Germain, Deborah Horn, Judith Bichelle, Lynn Muramaru, John McCabe, Ms. Atira, David Hargrove, and there are many more, but I'm going to continue the next, the next time that I read more names. Thank you all, and I recognize so many of our beloveds uh, that we've gotten to know through the Global Peace Tribe. Thank you so much for your generous donations. And of course, many others have donated anonymously because we had so many names. I kind of skipped through that. So thank you, everybody. It means so much. And I, I can see Kristen there with her hand on her heart. So I know that uh, there she is appreciating it very, very much. Thank you. Um, what an amazing tribe we're a part of, Deborah. We're very, very blessed. Definitely. And I so want to... Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I want to thank everyone for the donations that you give Saturday Not Alive when you register and when you donate to our donation portal. We really rely on those donations to create the shows every week, as well as our sponsors. So it's really, really appreciated. So thanks for all the green love that comes into Saturday Night Alive that allows us to do these shows. And it takes a village to do these shows every single week. So we love your support with promoting Saturday Night Live. Best thing is word of mouth. If you tell your other friends and family about it, we're gonna show you a promo video of next week. And one of the best things you can do is share the promo video for next week, which is gonna be a really fun show. So thank you for your support, or maybe you'd like to be part of the team and help create these amazing shows. Maybe you have a superpower with marketing because we really want to get out there and touch people all over the world. Just contact us, or maybe you'd like to volunteer and help in some way. So let us know how to help. It's me and Scott and a small team, and we really love all the support and green love that you can give. Um, also, we have a great show coming up, and Scott, do you want to show that promo right now? Sure. 
This is for next week. La Katrina here to invite you past the veils between the worlds to this world where the living and the dead celebrate together in this magical, mysterious, musical evening. Come, celebrate, shake those bones out. It's All Hallows Eve, sacred Samhain, and the Day of the Dead. Don't be afraid, the dead are quite at peace. So join us for this fantastic evening. Our presenters include old friend Danian Brinkley, best-selling author with multiple near-death experiences. He will provide insight as to what is on the other side. World-famous psychic explorer Mark Antony, best-selling author of Evidence of Eternity. Greg Magic Bernstein, who will lead us on a journey into connection to our ancestors. Priestess Janine from the Covenant of the Goddess, sharing unique pagan practices. And myself, Guinevere Bridge, clairvoyant, medium, friend to the living and the dead, and master ceremonialist to take you in between the worlds and to dance your soul alive and awake wherever you may be. We will also have a special presentation from Jeff McBride, the internationally acclaimed magician who recently stumped Penn and Teller. As always, there will be wonderful music. This week, we are excited to present to you Travis Punterelli and Ade Bell. Your hosts for the show are Scott Katamas and Trish Wright. And the evening will be completed with a dynamic after show provided by Jay Mayer and Light Touch. When you walk this line past the cords and the veils, your ancestors call your name, as do I. So join us as we explore and celebrate this powerful time of year. Wow. They do a great job. I, I want to thank Alan and Son in Virtual World Studios. They do a really terrific job with um, these promotional videos. And a little later on tonight, we're going to show another video that Jay created that will tell you a little bit more about the after show that he's going to be providing for us next week. Uh, and I'm going to share about November briefly. All right. I've got the... Uh, Visual right here. We've got our shows lined up for November, and thank you again for your sponsorship and donation support that allowed us to do this. On November 6th, we're going to be partnering with Deborah Moldau of Evolutionary Leaders Organization. The theme is going to be honoring the relationships of Gaia and humankind. We're going to have Gary Zukoff, Catherine Woodward Thomas, Diane Logboat, David Nichols of Gaia Earth. It's going to be a really powerful show. November 13th is going to be very unique. It's going to be technology for good for the upliftment of humanity. We've got some super power players in the technology industry who have had awakening experiences, and they know they're supposed to use their technology and their money for the planet. We're going to have Tom Chi, who's the former head of Google X, who created the self-driving cars and Google Glass. Lucian Tarnowski with Davis World Economic Forum, who's a young leader who's traveling the world, leading initiatives to fulfill the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Edward Hickman of Onatha, he's a social platform um, person with a mission to create a universal basic income for all global citizens. It's all next level technology that's gonna support everything we believe in 
for Global Peace Tribe. On November 20th, we were going to work, we are going to work with Teresa Collins again, Global Coherence Pulse, Living in the Current of Your Purpose. On November 27th is Thanksgiving weekend. We are going to focus on the powerful magic of gratitude. So it's going to be great. And we're working on December for you now. Great. And I think uh, the last thing I want to mention one more time is Sonic Source Activation, uh, which is taking place tomorrow. You're going to see and hear from <clears throat> Kristen and Cornflower in a little bit. But just again, a reminder, this is going to be a wonderful, wonderful event. Um, I'm really looking forward to hosting it. And they do an amazing job. So if you have not registered yet, there's just a few tickets left. So go to sonicsourceactivation.com. So Deborah, we're doing something different tonight. Um, we are following Troy's advice and we are gonna get up out of our chairs and move. And to lead us in some movement, we are blessed to have with us Keishi Chai to uh, show us how to do it. Yes, welcome everybody. It's my pleasure to be here. Before we get up, I would love for you just to take a moment to tune into your body. Notice if there are any parts that have tension or stress that you're holding on to, parts that you'd like more mobility, more freedom, and I'd like you to type it into the chat. Okay, so just tune in. For me, I tend to hold um, in my right scapula. So that's where I would like to mobilize tonight. And let's see, hips, I'm seeing right shoulder, um, hips, lower rib cage, Torso, neck. Yeah, there's a lot of neck. We spend way too much time in front of the screen. Neck and shoulders. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of that. All right. Well, we're going to get started, everybody. So you can honor where you are today. If you want to stay sitting, you can. We can listen to Tor Troy Stallman's uh, advice and all get up, even if it's just for a few seconds. I'm going to be up for a while. So join me. I encourage you. Um, and we're going to tune into our breath. So let's stand tall. You can place one hand on your heart, the other hand on your belly. I'm playing a beautiful song by my friend Pejman, who lives in Italy. Take a deep breath in and reach the crown of your head up toward the sky. And as you exhale, let your eyes soften, let your jaw relax. Inhale, heart opens. Exhale, shoulders melt down. Inhale, belly rises. And exhale, hips soften. Inhale, back awakens. Exhale, feet ground down. Inhale in love. Exhale out gratitude. Hands slowly lower, eyes open, fingers and toes wiggle. Widen your stance. And let's take a deep breath. Reach up, long waist. And exhale down, ha. One more time, inhale up. Breathing deep into your belly and exhale out. Right arm reaches over to the left, stretch into your side waist and round down the front, navel to spine. Left arm reaches up and over, inhale. And slowly exhale, come down. Reach the right arm over to the left corner, gaze down at your left leg. And switch gently, pull the left arm to the right corner. And let's circle the arms, come down toward the floor, float them up toward the sky, and switch direction, moving to the right, release down, exhale. Inhale up. Bring the hands down to your thighs, 
heart opens, drop your head and slowly roll up. Inhale, arch and exhale, contract. Gently press the right shoulder down, look to the left. Press the left shoulder down, look to the right. Hands on the floor to heal the feet underneath the hips. And slowly roll up to stand. Shoulder circle up and back. Breathe. Elbow circle. Gently bend and straighten your legs. Feet grounding down into the earth. Arms slowly lift up and back. Inhale. Exhale, grow roots out of your feet. Shoulders drop down heavy. Ha. Inhale. Exhale. Ha. Inhale. Exhale. Ha. Last time. Ha. Shake out the hands, shake out the feet, shake out the head. You can bounce around. Widen your stance. And gently tip your head over to the right. Shoulders are heavy. Tip your head over to the left. Hold your head to the right. Spiral the left thumb back. Inhale and exhale. Bring the left hand to your lower back, chin in. And slowly release the right arm down and melt one vertebrae at a time. Hanging like a rag doll. Slowly move yourself to your left side and float up. Stretch your lower back, your middle back, your upper back. Realign, face front, and lean to the left. Inhale. Exhale. Bring the right hand to your lower back. Gaze down. Left arm slowly lowers and melt. Ease yourself over to the right. Slowly float up. Shoulders circle back and down. Elbows. Arms. Start to gaze behind you. Bring the right arm in front. Lunge the right leg back. And let's move through our fingers. Lift the right heel up. Tuck under. Press the hands away. Slowly look underneath the right armpit and back down and switch. Lunge the left leg back, left arm across, little finger to thumb, thumb to little finger, left heel up, tuck your pelvis, push the hands away and look underneath the left arm. Front, shoulder circle, and forward. Let's bounce on our on our feet. Slow, deep inhale and exhale. Thank you very much. I hope that was grounding for you, and you feel a little bit more connected to your body. Hey, shit, that was fantastic. We got to do this every week now. Uh, this has got to be like, you know, we find things like, you know, the Wisdom Jewels becomes a weekly feature. This, I feel so much better because I otherwise I'm just stuck in this chair. So thank you. I want to acknowledge a couple of people. This is the beautiful music. Tell us a little bit about this music we just listened to, Keishi. Yes, this is my 
friend, Pej Mantada, not Jan. He is a Persian musician. He lives in Rome, in Italy right now. And he is one of the leading experts of Sufi music and Persian music. He's also a painter as well. And please say his name again. It's such a beautiful name and I didn't even want to try it. So tell us again. Pejman Tadayan. It's a beautiful name, beautiful name. And speaking of beautiful, definitely want to encourage everybody to stay in touch with Keishi. Uh, go to her website, keishi.com. K-A-E-S-H-I dot com. I love that unique uh, version of your cap there, that hat. And, you know, Casey is very dedicated to the earth um, and she does a lot of wonderful projects around the earth. Um, and you've got a, a creative project coming up. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, you can scroll down from the front page if you want, or I'll just say a couple of words. Um, I'll scroll you... down. Here we go. Oh, this did not update. So that's all right. No problem. I'll just speak. Let me um, try re if I refresh, we can see if that works. There we go. Yes. <laughs> so I have a performance project coming up called Trash Monster, and that's about the, a dystopian, not too far away future where we're living in garbage and we're looking for a green plant. And then uh, if you're interested in moving your body more, I teach regularly at the Belly Queen School, a lot of online classes. Um, earlier, Scott, you mentioned that a lot of the people here are 45 years young and um, and higher up in number. I myself, I'm 48. I've been teaching movement since I was 17, so that's 31 years. And I've been dancing um, a large part of that time also. And I teach at the school, uh, both in person and online. So that's at bellyqueen.com. And I'm also pretty involved, well, pivoting more and more into nature-based projects, figuring out how I can spend more of my energy helping Gaia helping our mother. So I'm so excited about the upcoming shows. I'm always tuning in every week, even when I'm not repeat offending like I, I did today. <laughs> you know, we're already uh, putting together our next kind of environmental show. And so definitely we'll have you on that one for sure. And thank you for just all that you do. And you're a wonderful, wonderful new part of our Saturday Night Alive for the Global Peace Tribe tribe. Thank you. And thank you very much, Kristen. I'm going to put Kristen on for a second because we met you through Kristen. So thank you very much, Kristen, for bringing, bringing your amazing friends on, you know? Oh, thank well, you. Well, Keishi, I, I believe in her from the depths of my being and the art and the awareness that she's offering. So it's such a pleasure to bring, to introduce Keishi to your community, Scott and Deborah, and, and I know she's already brought so much light and and beauty to the show. So, she sure love has. Love you, Casey. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, speaking of bringing friends onto the show, um, I get to introduce next uh, a friend of mine that I've known for. Uh, oh no, I got ahead of myself. <laughs> I apologize. I do this sometimes. Let me go to Deborah to introduce uh, Cornflower. I apologize. Take it away, Deborah. Um, yeah, and hi, Boobly. <laughs> Um, this, that was perfect for getting us ready for cornflower next. And you'll see why that was just a warm up with cornflower. So we can move to the music. He's again, one of our favorite musicians. He's going to be partnering with Kristen for tomorrow for the incredible offering they're doing. And he, again, like Kristen moves music from his soul and from his art. He is a, a channel for music and blows us away every time. And this is something definitely you can get up and move to. So take that good energy that you just cultivated in your body and let's move to Cornflower. Thank you, Cornflower, for being with us. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Scott. Uh, it's great to be back. And uh, I'm beaming in live from Northeast Tennessee. And a uh, song I've got for you is With All Things. So here we go. Don't 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 don
my flashlight again. Oh, go ahead.
That was one of the most enjoyable musical pieces in the history of the show. Of course, the music is amazing, but then watching everybody dancing, Sean Jay was doing magic. I mean, that was <laughs> really pretty outrageous. <laughs> yeah. So uh, a couple of things, everybody. First of all, to learn more about Cornflower, go to his website, cornflowermusic.com cornflowermusic.com and he's really generous he provides all sorts of uh, live releases you can find albums music um it's really important so everybody go there and click where it says subscribe and listen and this is important for us to support our artists um and uh there that's a great set too that's worth yeah. three dollars and 33 cents on its own but when I mean, you subscribe you not only get that but you get over 70 hours of my my music that's incredible so everybody, come on, we can all afford $3.33 a month. So let's subscribe or more, definitely the or more. <laughs> yeah, or more. <laughs> definitely, let's, let's do the or more. Um, so thank you. And I'm going to bring on your partner for tomorrow. Yes. Uh, here's Kristen once again. Hello, Kristen. Kristen. Hey. Oh, so my sister. gosh. Cornflower, that was epic. Thank that you. That was so much fun to dance and just feel that piece that came through. I needed to be this time. I, I needed to drop in that little funk. Funk had to hit today, so I was feeling the funky vibes. We totally of, felt it over here. Yeah. That felt great. <laughs> Thank you. Tell us what you two are going to be doing tomorrow. Well, tomorrow is um, a second iteration of an event that we birthed together from the Saturday Night Alive. I mean. Gary uh, Zukoff and Linda Francis connected us, but then here on Saturday Night Live, we actually got to connect and say about talk about collaborating. And then Scott and Deborah were like, let's do this thing. So I think it was June 6th or June 8th of this year, we did a, our first Sonic Source activation, and it went so incredibly well. I mean, um, it was such a deep, profound experience for me personally uh, within the music, and getting to co-create with Kristen has just been pure flow pure magical flow Aww. and um it's just such an honor because it's very rare to have that with another musician in my experience yeah and so uh so anyway this one is called doors of perception and um it, we're our idea is we're going to be offering mystic passages like our favorite quotes from mystics and have those be launching pads for these deeper creative explorations through music. And then each one, we're going to be offering uh, a unique focus. Do you want to drop into that, Kristen? Yes. So we like to say this can be like a super ethereal concert for you if you just want to <laughs> put on like a bla your, your little blindfold and kick back. <laughs> that is totally okay. You are invited to enjoy the music in that way if you like. However, there are <coughs> going to be some opportunities to engage your own creativity on even deeper levels um, from visioning meditation to um, drawing. You can get your pens and pencils and papers out and draw to a piece, um, free flow writing and movement and so for each journey each sonic journey we're going to kind of give you a suggested prompt and um, you can engage as you feel i have to say the last time we did this i concur with cornflower it was one of the most profound and awesome two hours that i have ever spent in musical collaboration and we had an incredible journey and i know tomorrow is going to be just as magical and and new new kind of expressions are going to come forth as well so be it. beautiful so everybody let's definitely uh support them by coming come into this amazing Yay! event nice oh chance. and i want to say one other thing if yes. you cannot make it tomorrow um you can still sign up and enjoy because it's going to be recorded and you will have your very own copy sent to you right. right after so if you sign up and you can't attend tomorrow, no worries, because you can still attend on your own time. Thank you so much for that wonderful reminder. That's exactly right. But so, we'd love for you to be live with us because the live would. container and just like what we're experiencing here now together, being together in the moment and co-creating the moment, each one of you get to be instruments in the galactic symphony of the one song as we co-create together. So you get to join in and be a part of that whole dance. Yes, live is where it's at for sure. Beautiful. So 
look forward to seeing all of you tomorrow with Cornflower and Kristen as we go deep into this amazing experience that they co-create. All right. Now I get to do what I started. Scott introduces James Take Two. Um, James Fochtenberger has been a friend of mine for a long time. I'm also a big fan of James and his brother. Uh, not only do they have a beautiful name, Schmachtenberger, but they are two of the smartest, most intelligent men I know. And what's amazing about James, um, and his brother for that matter, is they're brilliant, but they're also totally heart-based. Um, and uh, all of us who know James and love James appreciate that somebody that intelligent is that heart-based. And uh, he's taken that incredible compassion that he has for humanity um, and created the Neurohacker Collective. And their mission is to advance the human quality of life. The Neurohacker Collective products are radically different because they employ a unique methodology of research and development based on complex systems silence, science. And the scientific approach focuses on supporting the body's ability to self-regulate. Now, the company began with a focus on cognitive products with the launch of Qualia Mind, but it's developed several other products to support sleep, longevity, skin, energy, vision, and even immunity. James was motivated to start the Neurohacker Collective by his own personal struggles to withstand the mental and emotional exhaustion common in fast-paced entrepreneurialism. And I won't go into it, but because I've known James for many years, he's been an entrepreneur who's worked seven days a week, uh, created several multi-million dollar companies. Um, and I've watched him go from being pretty stressed out to chill. He's like a chill guy. So he's also a TEDx speaker. He's an activist uh, and a champion of empathetic solutions to global solutions. So James, it's really a, a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Scott. And thank you for the intro. That was awesome. <laughs> well, you're pretty awesome. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about Neurohacker, like how it began a little bit more and what you're experiencing in watching the tremendous success that you're having. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I was, I was fortunate that early on in my career, I had a decent amount of success, which allowed me to kind of step back from some of the day to day and start to turn a lot of attention to more nonprofit types of ventures and started to take a very deep look at, you know, given my unique sort of sets of skills and capacities and connections, what could I do that would be the most impactful? And there was a lot of different directions that I thought about and considered, but ultimately, there was an idea that came through that just had so much inspiration behind it that I couldn't not pay attention. And the, you know, the basic idea was, could we create something that would profoundly increase intelligence and intelligence in all the different types of intelligence and not just, you know, the basics of focus and attention, but um, emotional intelligence and discernment and critical thinking and, you know, all these different things. So that, people had better sense-making capacity and a greater ability to understand the world in which they were in. And, you know, the thought process was if, if there were people, if there was a large number of people who were dramatically more intelligent, that this would be able to start to develop more solutions for more problems. So rather than focusing on a specific problem, work on increasing the amount of resources being brought to bear. And at the same time as wanting to increase intelligence, I wanted to look at, could we increase qualities like empathy and compassion? So the idea was, you know, now you've got millions of people who are profoundly more intelligent, more competent, more capable, and because they have enhanced empathy, there's an intrinsic motivation to use that skill set, not only for personal gain, but to help their families and ultimately the world at large. So that was really the, the kind of inspiration behind starting the company. But then when I actually started to dive into the process and look at what would it take to create something that could deliver on that vision, it became clear that the versions of science that were being applied weren't basically insufficient. Um, I spent a long time meeting with all kinds of chemists and formulators and 
neuroscientists and you know, everyone loved the vision, but didn't see a way to be able to make that viable, especially at scale and affordably and accessibly. Um, and so what ended up happening was we essentially had to develop a new scientific model. Um, and so what we did was we took complex system science and begin to apply it to the study of human physiology. And what that allowed us to do was to be able to understand physiological systems at a level of detail and nuance that for the most part, others just weren't looking at. And then being able to understand it in that nuance, be able to look at, you know, for one, what, how does the system function optimally? And then what are the major issues and causes of any kind of deficiency? And then how could we formulate to be able to support optimal function? And not only to support and get people into optimal function, but to then to be able to increase resiliency so that if something happens that takes someone out of balance, that they have the capacity to be able to come back in. And so that was you know, really what, what has made Neural Hacker special over the years has been this approach to science, this ability to study systems at incredible degrees of detail to map out entire systems and how they work to understand all the mechanisms of action that are related to a particular outcome and then to be able to formulate in a way that supports homeostasis and human optimization um, and you know with that we we started off in cognition um, partly because that's where the inspiration came from right make millions of very intelligent very empathetic people um, but also because we recognized that that was a pretty ubiquitous need. Um, almost everyone was looking to either increase brain function or to be able to slow down or turn around cognitive decline that was occurring. And so we wanted to start there, but it also had a, like, another sort of strategic relevance. Part of what got me into this was that <clears throat> when I was 21, I was hit a like pretty extreme degree of burnout. Um, I had been running a vocational college that was well beyond what my experience level should have had me doing. Um, and I ended up you know, working 22 hours a day. Uh, and by the time I was 21, I got diagnosed with stage three adrenal exhaustion, could barely focus. And I knew all the things that I needed to be doing in life. I knew that I needed to eat better. I knew I needed to sleep better. I knew I needed to exercise more but I just genuinely didn't have the energy to be able to do it. And quality didn't exist at the time, but I was able to find other things that could be sort of a kickstart that gave me enough energy and enough ability to start to do all the other lifestyle changes to be able to get life in order. And that's one of the things that you know, has also become really beautiful with quality is not only is it a very powerful formula that's helped a lot of people directly, but it also has been something utilized by you know, myself and any number of other people to give that sort of extra support and boost as you're trying to make meaningful lifestyle changes so that you've got the energy and the capacity to actually do it. Beautiful. Um, well, thank you. You know, thank you for what you're doing. And um, James and Heather, Dr. Heather, are going to stick around and Troy has agreed to join us. So we're going to have some questions and answers uh, as our after show tonight. Um, and we're also going to show uh, a fun video from Jay Mayer called Love All the People during the after show. Um, and we've got a couple of other things. So definitely please stick around for that. So James has been very generous in um, helping to introduce our audience to his products. Um, and so um, I'm going to bring up a couple of things. This is um, kind of the fine five main products uh, I have been using mine for quite a while and it really truly has helped. That's what made me want to invite James and then Dr. Heather onto the show. This is the first time 82 shows that we've done that I've actually endorsed a particular product. That's not something we normally do, but this is the real deal, everybody. Just like, you know, I say to you, hey, Kristen Hoffman and Cornflower, they're the real deal when it comes to music or the twin rate, they are the real deal. This stuff is the real deal. It is what we all need to really help change our neurochemistry. Um, and honestly, I use all the products except Vision. I haven't, I haven't started using that yet. But the other products I use. Um, and the mind, I keep it right here on my desk because it reminds me, I take it twice a day, to be honest, in the morning and then in the afternoon. 
to really help myself out. So um, there's a special code that he's given us. It's just simple. The code is SNA, SNA. And now what happens is that gives us an additional 15% off whatever you order. And that's going to be for life. So if you, um, you take a look and you'll see that um, Deborah has, and I have been putting in the link. So there's a tiny URL link that takes you to Neurohacker. Uh, and that'll take you right into us. Or just go to neurohacker.com and then put in our code of SNA. And that's going to get you uh, an immediate big discount. Also, to be really honest, transparent, um, James and Neurohacker are sponsors. Um, and they are being very generous in giving us a lifetime uh, commission for anybody who comes into the Qualia Neurohacker family through Saturday Night Live. So this is going to be an important way to help us to continue to move the show. And Deborah and I are excited about the possibility of having a repeat consumable product that's helping everybody to help generate income for us to continue to move the show forward. So we can continue to have great artists and we always play, pay our artists. We pay for the promotional videos that you see and we wanna to continue to grow this out. And this is a wonderful way to help us to do that. So everybody, please go to Neurohacker and put in that code of SNA for Saturday Night Alive. Um, definitely at the very least start with the mind um, or you'll also notice if you go to uh, the website, you'll see we can go down a little bit below and, um, and here I'll actually do that right now. So if you go to neurohacker.com, this is the main page, and then you'll see you can either start with just mind uh, or get the whole package of life, mind and night. And James, tell us just a little bit about the other two products along with Mind. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we talked mostly about Mind. So Life is our longevity anti-aging product. Um, it works on the five major pathways that are associated with anti-aging. Um, and it, if cognitive function isn't specifically what your need is, Life is probably, in my opinion, the best foundational supplement on the market for overall health. It's improving health at the cellular level. So it helps to support across essentially everything. Um, and the night has, it, it's a newer product. It's only been out about a year or so, but it quickly became my favorite. Um, you know, being a serial entrepreneur, I had a lot of sleeping challenges, uh, but night is, is a very different approach to sleep support than pretty much anything else I've seen. Most of what's out there, whether natural or uh, allopathic are essentially sedatives. They're designed to make you unconscious, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get better quality of sleep. And with night, there's no sedatives. It's actually something you take a few hours prior to bed. Uh, but what it's designed to do is to help to reset circadian rhythms and to support getting more REM and Delta sleep. And for me, it's been amazing. Um, totally changed quality of life having me waking up far more rested and having a lot more energy to be able to do what I do in the world. Good. It's true. So everybody, let's give it a go. This is, you know, Global Peace Tribe brings you great music, great teachers, great inspiration, and now the products that are really going to help us to function at the highest level. And uh, thank you again, James. He'll be sticking around and part of our after show. Um, so we're kind of in the home stretch. Um, and but we've got a little more magic. Uh, and um, I believe, Deborah, if you are still with us, you're going to introduce Sean Jay. There she is. I don't know if he needs another introduction. He's pretty <laughs> much way out there, and we love him. So we're ready for Sean Jay. I love you guys too. I love you guys too. And I prepared something very special to fit the theme of this evening. It's all about honoring our body temple. And I was thinking about what can I do to prepare for this? And I was thinking about what we put in our body. I mean, we've already been talking about it with these different amazing supplements and these cool things with, with very smart people that know a lot more about that than I do. But it's just something as simple as what you put in your body. And I'm thinking there's so much extra unnecessary added salt to our food 
Raise your hand out there if you can agree, especially when you go out to restaurants or you buy pre-made, pre-packaged stuff. And I uh, thought that I'd develop this piece for you guys based on that concept. And it's very important that I roll up my sleeves before I do this, because if I don't, none of this will really be that exciting. So with my sleeves rolled up, we're going to try uh, something using this salt and I'm going to venture to guess that there's about thousands and thousands and thousands of unnecessary milligrams of salt in our food when we eat at restaurants and when we get the pre-made stuff. I actually try to be very careful. It's even difficult for me to find stuff in the in the, the frozen refrigerated section because there's thousands upon that. It's like two to three thousand milligrams of salt. I actually counted uh, just like there's about two to three, maybe hundred thousand grains of salt that I'm pouring into my hand right here. Now let me just get this here and yep, yep that's right. Now how about we just change our diet a little bit and just reduce the overall sodium intake two three yep that's about right I mean celery has a lot of salt there's other things that have salt but if everybody can drum roll on your knees please yes indeed wow. Just, there's even salt in the air yep there it is right there Coming right back, slowly but surely. Let's see, can you guys see that? There we go. Do this right up here. Ah, yes, pretty cool stuff. No, sorry. There we are. That should be almost all of it. I think that's about all of it. Yep. We are good to go. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, there really is a lot of unnecessary salt in here. Uh, here we go. Yeah, there we go. Well, oh, come on. Well, since it's still, since it's still coming out, I don't know if you can see this. There we go. Since it's still coming out, I would. I was going to have, it uh, be nice to have corn flour provide the back heat, but with the lag on Zoom, it might be a little difficult. So, here we go. I'm going to try some lyrical wizardry to get across a message, a PSA that the world needs to hear. So, listen, think about this. So, tonight we're honoring our body temple. Don't think about this too much, it might make you mental. Take care of your teeth, they call them the dentals. That's right, eat them fruits, the vegetables, the lentils. Watch this hot beat, I got the instrumental. I'm riding this lyrics, I'm talking real mystic. Real cryptic, altruistic, a little mystic. Here it is, don't panic. At the end of the show, I'm gonna turn off my camera and vanish. Some people look at me cross-eyed like I'm speaking Spanish. Come on, guys, this is real easy. It's real easy to please me. Listen to the words that I say. I'm not deceiving. I'll give you something to fight for, something to believe in. It's still coming out. Man, here it is, so much salt. Listen, folks, it ain't my fault. They put it in your food, changes your attitude. Sometimes it makes you feel real rude and real lewd. Listen, here it is, I'm bringing you all the way to school, making the new rules for the Global Peace Tribe. Follow me along with the lyrical ride as we go deep, deep inside Sean J's brain. Sometimes I'm feeling a little insane. I gotta bring in it hot like tea pain. Here it is, every single grain of salt coming out. Here it is, going mental. Sometimes Sean J is a little harsh, but tonight I'm gentle. Here it is. Okay, okay. Whoa. Okay, I think that's about it. I think now I'm gonna take a dip. But listen, listen, my time is about up. I'm gonna pop another rhyme and stuff. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm Sean Jay, and my time is up. <laughs> and I think you guys are a wonderful group. And thanks so much, Scott, for bringing me to share my wisdom and my magic. Oh, Sean, you're absolutely fantastic. I, I don't know how you do it. It's absolutely fantastic. That you're able to come up with such great 
magic as it fits our show. Um, <laughs> I, I don't think I'll ever eat celery or think of salt again without thinking of you. <laughs> right? You are truly the salt of the earth. And a reminder. Yes, um, thank you. There it is. There is the Sean J newsletter. And let's use that Q code. Grab your phones. It's free, go guys. The Q code and Watch. join his newsletter. Um, That's right. Sean, are you available for magic, like for corporates, parties, things like that? All the time, man. So here in North Carolina, live events are slowly but surely coming back. So I've been doing those live in person. And just like I met you in Asheville, live in person. Uh, okay. But yeah, I mean, I do I do live events for, for corporations here and through the magic of technology, just like we're working here. I mean, if you guys are still having Zoom meetings and they're getting really old and getting really boring, well, it's time to bring Sean Jay in to change things up. I guarantee everybody will be smiling and forgetting all of their stresses uh, by the time that I'm finished. So I'm actually in the stress relief business too, just like <laughs> the, uh, the gentleman with the really cool uh, neurotropic supplement there. It's, this is all a form of stress relief and it's very important in these very stressful times. So remember that. All right, so let's support Sean. Sean, thank you so much. Thank You're you guys. Fantastic. Thank you, Global Peace Tribe. I love you all. <laughs> How does he do that? How does he do the thing with the salt? It's, I, I'm, Whenever I watch Sean, I go from being my current age to about eight years old, like, oh, how do you do that? How do you do that? All right. Well, our last kind of official part of the night is um, Deepak Chopra. And uh, Deborah has a, a good relationship with him. He was not able to join us tonight live. He has agreed to come on live a little bit later on um, in a few months. So I went back into the Saturday Night Alive vaults. Uh, we've had Deepak on live three times, and this is what I chose to show. Um, and it was actually, it's interesting because uh, he references, it's actually kind of towards the beginning of the pandemic. Um, so it's kind of interesting what he has to say, but it really fits so much the theme of tonight. So let's hear what Deepak Chopra has to say about us and health, both ourselves and our planet. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Scott. So thanks everyone for being here. I think what we're witnessing right now in the world is the death of an old story and the birth of a new story. At least that's what I hope. The old story was about uh, violence, war, climate change, um, pandemics, financial disasters, social injustice, economic injustice, chronic illness, and now COVID-19. So I want to put this in a little bit of a perspective just from the view of um, the pandemic, the virus. So COVID-19 is a mutation of coronavirus, as you know, which is the flu virus. Coronavirus has existed for thousands of years. It's part of our ecosystem. And uh, it's part of the planetary microbiome. The microbiome is the genetic information in the entire ecosystem of planet Earth. And um, it's millions of genes. You have a microbiome inside your body, um, which is approximately 2 million to 20 million genes, depending on where you live. Only 25,000 genes that in your body are human. The rest are bacteria, viruses, fungi and they sustain the biosphere. The collective microbiome, which all the bacteria, all the viruses, all the fungi, all the germs, all the genetic information sustains what we call the biosphere. The biosphere is the ecosystem outside our body, but it's also the ecosystem inside our body. The ecosystem outside our body recycles as the ecosystem inside our body. So the biosphere outside, inside, is the same. When there is an unsustainable biosphere, which means <clears throat> that the ecosystem is severely stressed, the genetic information, the microbiome of the planet is severely stressed, then mutations occur. Mutations occur spontaneously too, very small amount, but the vast majority of mutations occur because of a toxic environment. And right now what we have is an inflamed toxic environment in the world. 
So inflamed minds, hostility, anger, resentment, grievances, inflamed brain, inflamed body, inflamed gene activity as a result of the disruption of the microbiome. And a mutation comes along and it devastates everything that's happening. The economic structures, national security, um, health, young people even getting infected. Looking at the data, it's very obvious. Looking at some of the computer modeling, it's very obvious that there is inflammation. And that's what we need to address. The old story is one of the inflamed humanity. The new story could be a more peaceful, just, sustainable, healthier, and joyful world, but it depends on us. We have to tell the new story and we have to execute the story into actuality. So <clears throat> this mutation is actually repairing the ecosystem. As we hide in our cages right now, back to our homes, the biosphere is repairing itself. The air is cleaner, the stars shining at night, even in Bangalore and Hyderabad, people are breathing in polluted cities. You can see the Himalayas from 500 miles away. Fish are returning to dead lakes. And I just read that the bees are back. You know, the bees were almost going to be extinct and they supply 90% of our nutrition, vegetables, fruits, all through pollination through the ecosystem. They're back. The bees are back, which means climate change is reversible. We also saw the oil of price fall to less than zero, which means an oil-free economy is possible. So through the last hundred years, any time there's been a crisis, pandemics, depression, economic disasters, there's something new that has emerged. World War I, Great Depression, AM radio. World War II, Atomic weapons, unfortunately, but then TV. 1990, after the economic depression, uh, we had the internet. 2000, uh, same time as 9-11, around the same time, the emergence of mobile phones and then smartphones and now all these technologies that we have, that we can communicate together. A global brain is being born and a new story is emerging. Social scientists who understand emergence say that uh, uh, certain things happen when something new happens. First there's the destruction of the old and then there's the emergence of the new. But emergence is now becoming a science. And emergence happens when you have uh, an open system of communication like the one we have right now, where there's total transparency, where there is openness to feedback, where no one is personally offended, where there's a shared vision, where there is emotional and spiritual bonding, and where there's the complement, complementing of everyone's strengths with maximum diversity, humanitarians, scientists, technology people, storytellers, poets, musicians, uh, filmmakers, uh, hip-hop artists, graffiti artists, uh, we need a new story right now. And that new story is a new context, a new meaning, a new relationship with each other, and the emergence, ultimately, of a more peaceful, just, sustainable, healthier, and joyful world. What does it take to do that story? I just told you exactly the ingredients for a new story. Our old story is unfortunate and it's been being recycled for thousands of years. COVID-19 is the latest story, but now we have riots all over the world, especially in America, but there's war, there's terrorism, there's ethnocentrism, there's racism, there's bigotry, there's hatred, and national leaders across the globe are gangsters. So that story does not work anymore. We need a new story. And it's up to us to create that new story. A story that begins by deep listening to each other. A story that involves emotional intelligence, emotional freedom, emotional uh, relationships, 
that embody empathy, compassion, love, kindness, empathy, and joy. A new story requires expansion of our awareness of who are we beyond our appearance, beyond our color, beyond our nationality, beyond our religion. It needs expansion in the direction of insight, intuition, imagination, inspiration, but also ex execution. A new story requires love in action because love without action is meaningless. And action without love is irrelevant. But when you have love and action together, you can create a new story and it better be a love story. So it requires expanding our awareness. It requires smart goals. Make sure that we can stretch more than we can reach. Make sure that we make everything measurable. Make sure that we are aligned. Make sure that we record our progress. Make sure that we set time limits. In other words, it's a practical story. It also means taking responsibility, having integrity, having respect for each other, having authenticity, having a higher calling. It also requires what we call, since Scott mentioned, or somebody mentioned spontaneous fulfillment of desire, it requires understanding of what is called synchronicity or the entanglement of sensations, images, feelings, thoughts that we actually use to create stories. The raw material of experience is just that, sensations, perceptions, images, feelings, thoughts. That's the raw material of all experience, all human experience. But to be human is also to have a story. And stories have interesting um, dynamics to them. There are good guys, there are bad guys, there are heroes, there are villains, there's the sacred, there's the profane, there's good, there's evil, but ultimately all stories that are good stories are also love stories. So there, is, there are challenges, there are trials, there are tribulations, you fall down, you get up, you have vision, you ultimately get to the mountaintop because you started with a dream and as Martin Luther King Jr. said, I have a dream. It wasn't a personal dream, it was a collective dream. So when there is a collective dream, when there is service, then there is reflection, when there is Sangha, then you have emergence. So all I want to say is this is the time. This is the time for emergence. This is the time for a new story. The backstory is dying. Social structures are dying. The ecosystem is repairing itself. Even markets are dying. And we will see now a new leadership in the world that will come from the world, that will come from us, that will come from the next generation, that will come from our collective humanity because the old story is not working. Okay, so keep these words in mind. Peace, social economic justice, sustainability, and uh, health, and happiness, and joy, and freedom from social constructs that don't work. Social constructs that have been based on predation, on conquest, on slavery, on social injustice, on economic exploitation, those structures are dying. You will see distributed leadership in the world and sanghas. In Eastern wisdom traditions, uh, we are told you need only three things. Refuge in the Buddha, which means higher consciousness. Refuge in the Sangha, which means community with shared vision and shared passion. And refuge in service. That's it. And, you know, there are other words to describe this. Seva, service, Sangha, community, Simran, meditation, reflection, self-inquiry, and transcendence. If we combine these, create global communities online and offline, which we have the capacity to do now with all the new technologies, we can create a global Sangha. The internet now is our collective brain. You can give somebody a dopamine hit by sending them an emoticon, no matter where you are. Or you can do what the president does, send an inflammatory tweet and inflame the world. The choice is ours. What are we going to do? Are we going the way of extinction? Or are we going the way 
of the new humanity. I have been working with ecologists and scientists who tell me that if bugs and bees and insects and bacteria and viruses disappeared from our planet, all life would cease in five years. If humans disappeared from our planet, all life would flourish on this planet in five years. So the human experiment is a very interesting experiment in evolution. It could also create heaven on earth, but it would also create extinction. This is the moment. So what's your story? What's your backstory? What's the current story? What is the future? What's there? What is the vision when you get to the mountaintop? How can we all get there? And then proceed into the valley, which will bring us joy, peace, sustainability, and a new humanity. This is all I have to say today to you, my friends. We must share our collective story. We must bond emotionally. We must complement each other's strengths. And we must not fight the darkness, only bring on the light. And you can all do it. Thank you. Wow. What a powerful, powerful. I mean, it just it holds up everything he has to say. So thank you, Deepak, uh, for being a part of this show and for your beautiful vision. Thank you so much. I want to acknowledge a couple of people. And they don't know I'm going to do this, so I might embarrass them. And then I'm going to bring on Deborah, and then we'll uh, transition. I want to thank, this is our first time on panel. This is Lori Bard. And Lori, thank you. He has... Um, he's an incredible producer. He has introduced us to a lot of the musical artists you're going to be seeing over the next couple of months or hopefully beyond that. So thank you, Lloyd, coming to us from his office in Ashland, Oregon. You also saw his uh, dance moves as he was working out long uh, to uh, Cornflower there. So thank you so much. And here is Jay Mayer, who creates a lot of the videos for us. And here's a short one just to introduce what's going to take place on next week's after show. So thank you, Jay. Looking forward to seeing you after the show next week. That's going to be great. A lot of fun. Um, I want to bring on Deborah, And as she comes on, we're going to one last time really encourage people to donate. And we're so grateful for all the money that has already come in to help rescue uh, Ali Sin and his, uh, his sister. And one more time, here is the Q code. Uh, and I have a few more names that I get to read. Um, so if you haven't donated yet, please use the Q code or use the um, uh, form that Deborah puts into the chat box. Thank you for doing that, always, Deborah. And the new people that have donated since I last read this, a lot of anonymous. So those of you who have donated anonymously, thank you very much. Um, I also want to thank Susan Pudelek, Shauna Jacobs, Dean Bell, Susan Woolridge, Angela Bell, Scotty Manzanares, Terry Russo, one of our dear friends, David Hargrave. Thank you, everybody, for your donations. Please keep them coming in, and I'll actually read them one last time at the end of our after show. Well, Deborah, what do you Yeah, think? this has been a beautiful show again. <laughs> Every single time, it blows us all away, and so much great information, so valuable. And of course, the music over the top. Thank you so much, Kristen and Cornflower. You always are amazing. And looking forward to seeing you tomorrow for another adventure between the two of you. And uh, thank you, James. Thank you, Lloyd. Thank you, Kashi. Um, Heather, just really beautiful. And thank you uh, for bringing this to everyone. This was his uh, idea. His 
baby, his show. So thank you, uh, everyone. So I'm much a proud love. couple tonight. And thank you, Deborah, for everything you do to make it happen. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, and here's Dr. Heather. I'm going to just kind of bring on some of the people that are with us. Um, so this is kind of the official end of the main show, but uh, stick around. We're going to have a wonderful after show. And as kind of a transition, I'm going to play a Jay Mayer video. Um, and it's a, a real fun one. It's called Love All the People. 